My name is John Sabers. I'm your host, uh, and today uh, we'll continue with our current series, uh, the uh, series subject being Jews and their culture. Now, for those of you new to Celebration, uh, this is a program which tries to uh, focus on um, people and cultures with a notion of uh, getting a better understanding uh, of them, what makes them tick, so to speak. Um, are we are uh, willing to look at the good, uh, the bad, uh, the indifferent, the mundane, if you will, uh, in our uh, effort to better understand. Now, in, in doing this, we will, of course, uh, uh, track across some familiar turf, uh, but uh, we hope also to, uh, to cross areas uh, seldom uh, ventured upon, uh, little known, but which uh, offer valuable information and uh, information which uh, everyone should know to uh, be able to formulate a, a, real, a well-rounded opinion of, um, of this particular subject, uh, Jews and their culture. Now, uh, in the past, I've uh, uh, talked about this, uh, uh, this, this program, this series, uh, in terms of a Marco Polo-esque adventure. Uh, and uh, uh, with that spirit, uh, we will uh, continue. Um, uh, we, uh, we think that we are on a subject which is uh, quite important. Uh, we believe that uh, a few uh, people in culture have left a uh, greater mark in history. And arguably, at the present time, uh, is. Uh, perhaps uh, the most uh, uh, salient or powerful uh, influence um, uh, in, in the long history of uh, prominence. So uh, with that note in mind, uh, we will in this particular program uh, try to, uh, to get a better understanding of just what is meant by the term Jew. Uh, some people have uh, assumptions of just what that term means, and um, others are, are sort of vague. Uh, but uh, we, we do hope to um, uh, kind of get a better idea. Uh, we uh, have had a number of episodes on this particular subject to kind of get a better idea of what is meant by the term Jew. I will try to uh, kind of wrap that up uh, with this episode and perhaps also uh, do some recapitulation. Now, with that in mind, uh, let us begin, shall we? The term Semite uh, is derived from Noah's son Shem and is used to identify a diverse group of ancient peoples whose languages are related, belonging to the Semitic family of languages. Uh, we can name some of the principal eruptions, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Arameans, the Nabataeans, and the Arabs. The principal Semitic peoples of ancient times were, one, the Akkadians, two, the Arameans, three, the Canaanites, four, the Arabs, five, the Ethiopians. Uh, this is a citation from who are the Pharisees and the Jews, are they Israel? a study by Pastor uh, Bob Hallstrom, uh, page 21, citing the Zondervan Pictorial Bible Dictionary, uh, page 768. Now, people, it's well to bear in mind uh, that uh, this uh, is a uh, language association uh, that has been given a Semitic language uh, association. Uh, therefore, the um, uh, Jews with the um, uh, Canaanite uh, connection so strong uh, in the, um, uh, this people, um, because of this uh, linguistic uh, connection, may validly uh, describe themselves as belonging to the Semitic language groups, um, being Semitic in that sense. Uh, this is not the first time uh, we've come into this kind of um, situation in which um, a term uh, can be used both uh, in a linguistic sense uh, and in a racial sense. 
Now here, we're not talking about a racial sense, but a linguistic sense. Since. And, and we saw the same thing also uh, amongst the Kasarian Jews, uh, where we have um, uh, these people described as a Turco-Finnish uh, language group. Um, this uh, uh, does not um, give us any information about the racial group. Uh, we do know from a letter written by King Joseph uh, to a high uh, official, Jewish official in Iberia, uh, in uh, Islamic Iberia, uh, that uh, uh, they are Japhitic uh, in line, uh, genetic lineage, genealogy. Uh, and as everyone is aware, uh, these particular Eastern Jews, uh, which is who are believed to have originated with the Khazars, basically, are, are called Askenaz, uh, Askenazim, uh, and Askenaz, of course, was uh, in the um, uh, ge uh, genealogy of Japheth. So uh, it does make a certain bit of sense. On the other hand, um, the uh, Kasarian king, uh, Bulan, I think, was the original uh, king who decided to convert, um, had many, many uh, uh, Jewish uh, scholars come up from the uh, Babylonian uh, territory to teach, build synagogues, and so forth, uh, and generally to instruct the people. And of course, the people were instructed not in the Israelitish religion, but in the uh, Talmudic, uh, the Talmudic um, religion. Um, and uh, therefore, uh, when the, the, the connection is made to uh, Japheth, uh, this may be due to a counseling on the part of uh, uh, these um, uh, uh, Jewish uh, uh, invited, invitees uh, uh, who may have uh, reached uh, uh, kind of a high uh, counseling uh, level, uh, maybe official uh, counselors at that point in time. But at any rate, uh, uh, taken at face value, uh, we assume that they are part of the Japhetic family. But, uh, uh, anyway, uh, let's uh, continue, shall we? Semite. Semites are those who speak Semitic languages. Uh, in this sense, the ancient Hebrews, Assyrians, Phoenicians, and Carthaginians were Semites. The Arabs and some Ethiopians are modern Semitic-speaking peoples. Modern Semitic peoples, modern Jews are often called Semites, but this name properly applies only to those who use the Hebrew language. The Jews were once a subtype of the Mediterranean race, but they have mixed with other peoples until the name Jew has lost all racial meaning. Please notice that this definition does make reference to the Hebrews as a people speaking the Semitic language, but it does not mention Jews. Now this is a citation from uh, Pastor Bob Hallstrom's study, Who are the Pharisees and the Jews? Are they Israel? Uh, page 22, citing uh, the World Book at uh, Semite. Well, people, uh, this uh, particular uh, World Book uh, uh, encyclopedia, I suppose is the proper uh, term for it, um, uh, it seems pretty definitive, uh, uh, and it seems to also exclude uh, uh, Jews, what we call modern Jews, from this category of uh, Semite uh, because of the language uh, uh, inconsistency, uh, and also because of the, uh, uh, the racial um, intermixing in which um, there is uh, no uh, real basis for uh, concluding that uh, this is a Semitic race. Uh, but let's consider something additionally. The World Book states, the Jews are a subtype, race, and a mixed people. It seems obvious that a mixed people would speak a mixed language. According to the same encyclopedia, the 20th century Palestinian Jews living in the land of Israeli, not Israel, speak the Yiddish language, which grew from High German and has some words from the Hebrew, Polish, Russian, and English languages. 
Besides that, the ancient Hebrew language is a dead language, and it has not been spoken for centuries. This is a citation uh, from uh, a study by Pastor Bob Hallstrom, Who are the Pharisees and the Jews? Are they Israel? Uh, page 22, citing the World Book, again at uh, Semite. Well, uh, although this, uh, I think, is generally accurate, I, uh, I think there's no doubt that um, officials within the uh, state of Israel, uh, Israeli, um, have, have tried to resurrect uh, the language, uh, and uh, I think it is taught in schools uh, uh, and has been for some time now uh, in that uh, state, uh, and that there uh, must be uh, uh, quite a lot of people who are a proficient, uh, you know, at least in um, a modern version of Hebrew um, uh, right now uh, in that particular state. But uh, nevertheless, uh, this is uh, an after-the-fact kind of situation, and um, um, it um, uh, does not really alter the, uh, the, the matter of definition. But let's continue. Remember that Esau is of the Abraham lineage, but not of Abraham. Esau and his descendants were not and are not the seed of the promise, as in Isaac shall thy seed be called. All of Esau's marriages were mixed, and his offspring were bastards. And in Malachi, God stated, And I hated Esau. Whereas Edom saith, We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. Malachi 1, 3, 4. See also Romans 9, 13. This is a citation from uh, the study by Pastor Bob Hallstrom, Who are the Pharisees and the Jews? Are they Israel? Uh, page 33. And now, people uh, in our study, I, I try to uh, also um, uh, try to make germane sometimes a, a continuity which uh, exists and which may uh, be seen. Uh, and for that reason, uh, and bearing in mind the last quotation, uh, I would like uh, to uh, present you with this uh, a fairly modern uh, quotation. Uh, it is from a, um, a prime minister of uh, the state of Israel, uh, uh, David Ben-Gurion. Uh, so uh, please note. We must plant hundreds of thousands of trees covering an area of five million dunams, one quarter of the surface of our country. We must cover the mountains and uncultivable land the hills and the sand dunes, the barren plains of the Negev, all the land of Edom and of the Arava, as far as Elath. This is a citation uh, from uh, Mr. Sheldon Emery's The Abrahamic Covenants, uh, page 12, citing the glory of Lebanon now in America, which quoted Mr. David Ben-Gurion uh, in a statement made in the second session of the Knesset, November 7, 1949. Well, uh, whether or not uh, there is a um, prophetic dovetailing here or not, uh, I cannot say, but uh, we do know this much, uh, that uh, in regard to Esau, uh, he was uh, consigned to being uh, the uh, servant, as it were, or the helper, uh, the, um, the lesser uh, in the relationship with his brother, uh, Jacob, Israel. But uh, toward the very end of time, uh, it is said that uh, uh, Esau will be allowed to break his yoke. And um, we think that this has uh, occurred in the last few hundred years. Uh, and that um, uh, right now uh, Esau can be considered to be um, uh, rid of that yoke and, um, and uh, 
So, but let us uh, continue on and, and take a look. I, I would like uh, to maybe get a look at some of the other areas besides Judea uh, that uh, are pertinent uh, here, I think. Uh, and uh, so we'll take a look at Samaria now. Samaria occupied the land between Judea and Galilee, being directly north of Judea and extended uh, to the plain of Estralon. From 745 to 721 BC, the house of Israel, ten tribes who had occupied this land, were taken into captivity to Assyria, 2 Kings 1811. The Assyrians deported them to the north to an area around the eastern border of Old Galatia, what is now Turkey. Now this is a citation from who are the Pharisees? and the Jews. Are they Israel? A uh, study by Pastor Bob Hallstrom, uh, page 27. Now, although the Israelites, uh, generally speaking, and in bulk were removed from Samaria, uh, it's certain that at least uh, a few uh, remained uh, that were kept there, uh, perhaps uh, for the purposes of uh, maintenance of farms and so forth, because uh, there's always a, a tax angle with the uh, Assyrian kings and Babylonian kings and so forth. They want revenue. So um, I, it uh, makes a certain sense to have um, tenders, as it were. Uh, so I, I think that some of the Israelites were left for that purpose. Uh, some of the poor people, the lame, halt, and blind, and so forth, uh, those too old to travel and uh, whatnot. So there were some Israelites who probably remained. Who are the people who then came into Samaria? Well, uh, let's take a look at that. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon, and from Cutha, and from Ava, and from Hamath, and from Sepharvim, and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. Now this is a citation from uh, 2 Kings uh, 1724. So uh, we do see, and we can probably guess, that most of the Israelites who are urbanites uh, were uh, removed uh, and uh, their place uh, occupied by these uh, strangers. But uh, in the countryside, there were probably still Israelites, um, a few in the cities perhaps. Um, and uh, so they got there. Uh, and these new arrivals uh, began to have trouble because they were um, uh, attacked by lions and uh, perhaps other beasts and uh, had their problems and sued the king of Assyria to uh, provide them some kind of help. They, they thought uh, perhaps uh, the local god was giving them trouble or something, uh, so I should send them somebody to teach them how to appease this god. Well, uh, what happened? Uh, well, consider. Then the king of Assyria commanded, saying, Carry thither one of the priests whom ye brought uh, from thence, and let them go and dwell there, and let him teach them the manner of the God of the land. Then one of the priests uh, whom they had carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel, and taught them how they should uh, fear, that is, reverence the Lord. Howbeit, every nation made gods of their own and put them in the houses of the high places which the Samaritans had made, every nation in their cities wherein they dwelt. So they feared the Lord and made unto themselves the lowest of them priests of the high places, which sacrificed for them in the houses of the high places. They feared the Lord and served their own gods after the manner of the nations whom they carried away from thence. Unto this day they do after the former manners. They fear not the Lord, neither do they after their statutes, or after the ordinances, or after the law and commandments which the Lord commanded the children of Jacob, whom he named Israel, with whom the Lord had made a covenant. And the statutes and the ordinances and the law and the commandment which he wrote for you uh, this is a citation from 2 Kings 17, uh, 27, uh, 
Now, people, uh, as I mentioned, uh, it's almost certain that there were at least some Israelites uh, who remained uh, amongst these uh, uh, immigrants who uh, came, uh, these pagans. Uh, and um, uh, we, we speculate that when the priest came, uh, there may have been one, more than one actually, uh, that he did come with his family and perhaps an extended family and also uh, servants and helpers and so forth. So uh, perhaps a uh, pretty fair number of Israelites uh, returned um, uh, to the various uh, cities of Samaria. Uh, but uh, it, it can be asked uh, just how effective their priesthood might be, given the fact that uh, the um, uh, kingdom of uh, Israel uh, was so heathenized uh, that uh, uh, the, the Lord God Almighty divorced them, uh, that they um, uh, were anything but uh, practitioners or keepers of the law. But at any rate, um, yeah, it may be that, uh, nevertheless, uh, the, the priest returned and read the law to these people. At any rate, we know this much, that uh, they gave lip service uh, to uh, uh, this uh, God of Israel, Yahweh, uh, but they kept uh, their own God in their hearts. Uh, it sort of reminds us of uh, Yahshua Christ's comment uh, in the way about uh, uh, the Pharisees, um, at least some of them, uh, who um, uh, are, speak uh, properly and so forth, uh, but their hearts are far away from the Lord. Um, but uh, bearing that in mind, uh, let's continue. However, we need to keep in mind that just as there was a remnant of people in Judea who remained pure in their genealogies, the same was true in Samaria. Isaiah prophesied a remnant in the land in Isaiah 17.6. We also know this is true because when Christ was at a well in Samaria, a woman came to draw water. John identifies her as a woman of Samaria, yet she knew her genealogy as she asked Christ, Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well? John 4.12. No Canaanite or Edomite could claim Jacob Israel as their father, nor could they claim a property right in the form of an inheritance in Jacob's well, which was given to his descendants. This woman from Samaria was an Israelite. Now this is a citation from who are the Pharisees and the Jews? Are they Israel? A study by Pastor Bob Hallstrom, uh, page 28. So, uh, I think it's clear that the sifting of uh, the seed of Abraham uh, uh, has begun. Uh, and although uh, at this point in time the great bulk of Israel uh, has been uh, uh, sifted uh, into um, uh, the area uh, around uh, uh, Media at that time, just south of, of the Caucasus, mountains and um, uh, east of uh, Turkey and, and so forth. Um, there were, however, um, yeah, even at this time, undoubted uh, settlements for trading purposes uh, along the Mediterranean all the way to Iberia and uh, perhaps uh, to uh, England uh, and uh, even Ireland. So um, uh, we do see this shifting uh, and we do uh, see that um, Although uh, intermarriage uh, was uh, predictable um, uh, for some of the uh, Israelites, uh, for some uh, the keeping of um, uh, the uh, genealogy, the uh, purity of the gene genealogy was important enough uh, uh, that uh, surely it happened. Uh, we see this also in Judea, which became a, a mixed uh, area of people. Uh, but which also contained uh, some uh, Israelites uh, whose genealogy uh, had been maintained uh, uh, pure. Uh, and um, so therefore, uh, we have uh, people uh, in that particular area when Christ came who were of his flock and who heard his voice and knew him and he knew them. But uh, the great book of bulk fell outside this category now, I'm not, when I say mixed people and so forth like this, I'm not trying to denigrate uh, anyone and so forth. Uh, they uh, have the potential to be uh, uh, excellent people. 
Uh, and in, fi in fact, uh, uh, Christ uh, opened the door uh, to everyone for personal salvation who chose to enter. But uh, the fact of the matter is that um, in terms of nation, not personal salvation, but in terms of nation, uh, there were certain um, uh, covenants which uh, either bode well or uh, very bad uh, for the uh, people involved, and that was uh, Israel, uh, according to the covenant of uh, the children of the promise. But uh, at any rate, uh, this is one group, uh, Samaria, uh, which uh, we think uh, in, in some ways uh, probably um, uh, connected with Judea. Now, Judeans look their nose down at the uh, Samarians. The, uh, the newcomers, the immigrants, were uh, sufficiently different uh, racially from uh, those in Judea uh, that um, uh, they were not accepted, uh, generally speaking, uh, the great majority. Uh, and uh, you can read about this uh, hostility since it uh, in reading the, uh, the Bible, uh, even the New Testament uh, parts. Uh, uh, the Israelites uh, typically referred uh, to uh, uh, these uh, people and um, uh, generally uh, non-Israelites, as a matter of fact, as dogs. Now, I think the, the reason this may be, uh, this term may have been used, is that a dog has a tendency to think that it is a member of a family, uh, when in point of fact uh, it's not really a member. Uh, and um, although the dog does not really understand that, uh, uh, it's really just a dog. Now, um, uh, we get some resonance uh, in this particular matter today, in the matter of uh, Freemasons, um, actually, uh, who would uh, fit this kind of category of uh, uh, thinking they belonged when in fact they didn't. Well, that's it, folks. Uh, we're out of time. Uh, this is Celebration. Uh, my name is John Savers. I'm your host. I appreciate your tuning in. Hope to see you again next time. <laughs>